So hello everybody, Driven by Mosin is out and it supports now the Akai APC Mini Mark II. Many people ask me to support this device, but I was not so eager about it because the first model, which I also have here, had some issues. I had some freezing issues with it, but nevertheless, some kind soul sent me this device. So what else could I do then support this as well? So what are the differences here? Let's start here with the faders. I never liked the faders on your old model because they are pretty flat and a little bit hard to grab. So this is definitely an improvement. You can, I'm not sure if you can see that. So they are much higher now and they are really nice to grab now. And this is definitely an improvement on the fader side. Besides that, there's not that much change. So the buttons are now squares instead of round ones. Okay, no difference here. And just to annoy me, they flip the cursor keys with the fader options here, which doesn't make any improvements. Just <laughs> I had to program it a little bit different. And there's also a minor change. They flipped here the rack record arm with the mute button so the mute is now closer to solo which makes a bit more sense I think and the rack arm is below that. Then the other change is that here on the mini we have only one two three if you count black it's four colors and here we have RGB colors. Besides that the usability is completely identical so far so you get all the modes of the mini in the Mark II as well. So to get an understanding what you can do you can also watch the old APC mini video but nevertheless let's have a look at it by doing maybe a little song let's improvise something so I have here three tracks a little bit of drum we want to have a bass and some kind of melody I have no idea what where this will take us so first thing what we can do we can play it so this is a play mode here, but for drums, let's go to the drum mode and you go there via the shift mode. So let's press shift and here on top you have the five different modes. So first one is a session mode. We are recording straight away, which I did not want to do. So <laughs> let's stop that. In this mode, you can run all your clips and scenes. So these are scenes here, nothing unexpected. And the second mode was the play mode you already have seen. So the third one is the drum mode. Mode, the drum sequencer mode so here in this area you can play your drum sound so we have here only two four five six seven different sounds in here in that drum kit and you get here also the color so that's the difference here to the first one to the mark one here we have only orange lighting and the select one is blinking and here you have the colors from the pads you chose here in Bitwig as well. But besides that, it works pretty identical. Oh, by the way, you can also use them in combination. So here you could do the clips now and here you could do the sequencing. So this is also a nice thing. If you have the previous model, you can definitely use it in combination with the second one. So let's do a little bit of drumming here. Nothing too impressive. Standard beat. Oh, I'm here completely lost. So here you select the page. So we're on the wrong page. Ah, now we're going. Nice. So second track. So by the way, you can do also start, play and stop here with that button. And being here, this one adds a new clip if you want to do that. Let's stop it again. And these ones are for recording. So this is a Ranger recording and this one toggles here overdub and there's more transport control here. This one selects the scale, so the root node of the scale. Maybe let's go with D minor, so you will also see it's D and you can toggle between major and minor with these buttons. So we can go here to minor scale. You also have much more scales, but let's stick here with minor. And here you can also toggle between chromatic mode and in key mode. Well, let's go now to the second track. So you can select tracks here with these buttons if the select mode is active. So here you choose the different modes for these 
buttons in the session view. So you have clip, stop, solo, mute, record arm, and select. So let's go with select. So let's go to session mode and select the second track. For that track, let's go to the play view. And we need a bass sound for that. And you can also open a browser here and also navigate the browser from the device. So you go here to the device mode and in the device mode you can then control here the device so you see now you can control the device but if you do it again you open up the browser and you have here the six filter columns where you can filter with different aspects and here you select your preset here you have a little bit play preview of the sound and here you can confirm it and here you can discard your selection so third one goes for the category and we're looking for electronic bass which is somewhere here where is it here it is synth bass so we have now different synth basses and let's check them out already nice and you can check them all out no idea what we're looking for <laughs> why not have the first one as you do a bit Always good to know. Let's go with that one. Okay, so what? Let's use the sequencer. So, sequencer is the fourth one. Here you can do sequencing. We first need a clip. You can create a new clip with that button. So, it will then loop with one bar, I think. And is it one bar? Yes, with one bar, but you can also configure that to have more bars in the settings. So let's go with that. We have now the sequencer running. You see the root node and you see the seven other keys. And you can navigate here also the pages and go up and down here in the range of the nodes. But we have D minor, I think we said. So let's, this is D. You can do also longer notes by pressing two buttons. And we have the second page. Okay. And let's go to the session, bring in the drums. And you can do here now the volume. Oh no, we're in the device mode still, let's go to the volume. Okay, nice. So I have now a third track as well. And on the third track, I have also an empty polysynth. Let's also pick something nice for that one. Maybe something a little bit percussion pluggy which we can maybe nicely sequence as well. So let's have a look at what, why not a bell? Should we go with a bell? Let's go with a bell. What do we have here? Sounds weird. Let's go with that one. Accept it. Okay. And this one shows the last sequencer. So the raindrop sequencer is something really nice. You need a long clip for that. For let's maybe go here with we need a new one. Maybe let's go with really long, like 32. Because it works like that, it runs down and always when it hits the bottom, it sounds the note. So, and here is the scale. So from D to D, because we have D minor and it creates note in the clips and it's better if you have a long clip. So you get really this running time from up to down. Sounds complicated, but if you see it, it's pretty easy. So let's have that running that clip. So you can create pretty interesting stuff. Can we tweak that sound? So what is that? Are we still in device? No, let's go to device. Weird. But let's hear it with the drums.
and a bit of the yeah. You get the idea, so it definitely does the job. You have to use in some ways a little bit much button combinations, so it's really nice if you have a second device where you can maybe navigate the scenes. So you could quickly select here your tracks and start your clips, and with the second one you could do the sequencing and sound mangling. So this would be really make a great setup to have two such devices or maybe have a launch pad for, for navigating that area or maybe something also which has a little bit of a transport button setup. But nevertheless, it's really powerful little device where you can do lots of stuff. I did not show everything. There's much more. You can do note repeat and stuff like that. So check out the manual. It contains all the details and I hope you like it, dig it. And until next time, make some funky music.